Hey, I'm Cody again. Thanks so much for clicking on this video. This video, we're going to highlight our script. We're going to break the script down and we're going to go over overcoming objections. So before we get to the dial session, I want you to understand the thought process and the psychology of the script that we use and how we overcome objections. So with this script, I'm going to start with the beginning of the script. The beginning of this script, we start out with good evening, good afternoon, good morning. I'm looking for John Smith. And so when you're doing that, when you're saying that, I want to make sure that we have the right person. Um, and so that's how we start out. Uh, good evening, looking for John Smith. Um, and they're typically going to say, and, and, and if, you know, if the wife answers, I may say, hey, good, good afternoon, good evening, I'm looking for Mrs. Smith. Um, I've got my smile on, I'm focused, and I'm, I'm following the script word for word. And you can actually find this script on our website so that you can follow along. Feel free to pause the video, find our script. You can go to resources, our scripts page on our secureig.com website and resources, scripts, and this script is Cody's avatar lead appointment script. You can click on that script. It'll open up in a new tab on your browser as a PDF. You can save it, look at it, print it out, whatever you want to do so that you can follow along with the rest of this video. So the next, after the little bit of that, after the little intro, you know, good evening, I'm looking for John Smith. John, this is Cody. You spoke to my associate, Joanne, and we get a recording of these Avatar Final Expense Leads. Whatever, uh, whatever name they use uh, for that recording, it's generally, there's about four different names, depending on what parts of the country that they call. Certain names and certain accents tend to work better because again, it's a robot calling with a telemarketer pushing buttons for the robot. And so we, we use Joanne in this area, in the Missouri area and surrounding states uh, in mid-Missouri uh, and in the central U.S. Um, so this is Cody. You spoke to my associate Joanne here within the last few days. And she told you I'd give you a call back about qualifying, and this is where I slow down a little bit, for the new state-regulated burial life insurance programs. If they don't insert any words, I'll do a little mini pause. If they don't do anything, looks like you give your first name as John, your last name as Smith, and for your security password, which is your favorite hobby, you mentioned fishing. Do you remember that? Does this remind you of that call that you just had a few days ago? Whatever the case is, uh, do you remember that? Uh, and they normally do. And actually, they normally stop me ahead of time. They normally remember before I even get to the end of that paragraph. So it, it's pretty neat. Uh, normally what happens is I'll say, hey, um, this is Cody. You spoke to Joanne here within the last few days. about. She told you I'd give you a call back about qualifying for the new state-regulated burial life insurance programs. And they'll say, yeah, I remember that. Um, I already have insurance. Excellent. Uh, let me ask you a couple quick questions uh, before we proceed. Um, so there's several different ways you could respond to that specific objection. They may say, hey, I already have coverage, I already have insurance, I already paid for burial, whatever, whatever the case is. Um, you could say, well, that's excellent. Uh, we definitely don't want to take that away. But we're, all going to be, we're already going to be in your area anyway, so why don't we at least drop off some information and leave that with you. Uh, again, when, and we'll be very brief, we don't have a lot of time. Um, but let me ask you a couple quick questions before we do that. Uh, you mentioned your first name is John, your last name is Smith, and your favorite hobby, which is fishing. Uh, do you remember that? Uh, great. Uh, I'm the final expense insurance specialist that Joanne spoke about. And as she said, there are plans for you to qualify for that that would take care of all of your final expenses. Now, again, we want to drop off, drop off some information. I understand you may not be interested. I understand you already have something, but we just want to drop off some information because uh, we're already going to be in your area anyway, so we might as well at least swim by and drop it off. Uh, are you more of a morning or an afternoon person? So I'm, I'm starting to get to that point where I'm trying to get an answer out of them and getting it, get into an appointment time that works for both of us. Uh, so when I get to that point, now again, I'm going to be in your area on Thursday. Are you more of a morning or an afternoon person? And what I find a lot is they've got, if they do certain things, like go to the gym, go to the doctor, they generally do them certain times of the day. 
or they feel like they're always home certain times of the day, and they generally know the answers to these questions. So are you more of a morning or an afternoon person? If they sleep in, they'll always say afternoon. Uh, so they say, if they say, hey, um, I prefer afternoons, excellent. Um, again, we're going to be there Thursday anyway. Um, would you prefer 2 o'clock or 4 o'clock? This is on the script. It's very simple. You're giving them options, A or B, and then they're going to give you a response. Um, I don't have to give options, but for a script and for agents to call and use this, it's generally the best way to get what we want. Uh, and so I say, okay, would you prefer, would you prefer that we swing by around 2 o'clock or 4 o'clock? Uh, and, and then I'll, I'll shut up and wait for them to respond, and they'll, they'll, they say, well, uh, 4 o'clock. Excellent. Um, are you still at 123 Main Street in Springfield, Missouri? I will confirm the address. That's what I will go into next is confirming the address, making sure it's the right address. And, and then I also want to make sure that I've got a little more information. I go into, can you describe your house for me? What color is it? So I can get extra details that makes them remember I'm coming and think through me being at their home. That's the psychology of it. And then the other piece is I want to be able to spot it. Um, and I want to get good directions. Uh, it, it helps me find houses if there's several in an area or several trailers in a, a trailer park or a big apartment complex. It can help point me in the right direction and get me there a little quicker. Um, if it's an apartment, I'll generally learn that by asking this question. Describe your house for me. They'll say, well, it's actually an apartment. Okay, great. I need to know that. What apartment number is it? So you can figure that out. Uh, also, I'll ask, do I, need any, do I need any special directions or will my maps get me there? Um, and they'll say, well, normally if you just use the, you know, you, 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 yeah, the GPS on your phone, it'll get you there. Or actually, most of the time GPS gets you lost, you're going to want to do this, 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 and this. Things I need to know. Um, and then I'll go into, would there be any reason why you wouldn't be there uh, Thursday at 4 o'clock? Uh, if there is a reason, if they're going to give me an objection, or if they're going to stand me up, or if they're not serious, I want to know why while I'm on the phone with them. That's extremely important because I can move the time if I need to. So I'll actually go into would there be any reason? And I used to use a, uh, I used to kind of, and you can humor, you, you can make give this little humor if you want this question. I used to ask, would there be any reason short of a nuclear bomb why you wouldn't be there Thursday at four? Uh, just add a little humor um, and to really get their attention. So you can ask the question however you want, uh, but then I'll go into. Uh, if, if, if no other reason would, would keep them from being there, um, then I'll go into, um, I want to add it to both of our calendars. And I'll tell them, hey, I, I, I'm squeezing you in my calendar. I have to be very brief. I don't have a ton of time because you don't want to sound like you have a ton of time in general. Um, and so I'll go into, uh, I'm putting this on my calendar right now. I want you to go ahead and put it on yours too. Do you normally use a fridge, a whiteboard, a paper calendar, um, pen and paper, what do you use to record your important appointments? Um, if they say, well, I normally just write it down on pen and paper. Okay, grab a pen and paper for me and I'll hold so I can give you the appointment time and the name. And they'll grab it. They'll get a pen and paper and say, okay. And I'll say, okay, it was Thursday. And sometimes I'll test them. Uh, Thursday, we talked about what time do we agree on again? Just to see what they say. Just to see how, how much they were listening. Well, uh, you had said four. That's right. Thank you so much, John. Thursday at four o'clock, and my name is Cody. So again, write down Thursday at four. My name's Cody, and I will, uh, I've will i got you in my calendar, so I won't miss you. We'll see you at Thursday at four. Have a great rest of your day. We'll talk to you soon. And so that's kind of the, that's the way I walk through the script. That's the way that I think through the script. And those are ways that you can keep from getting stood up. It's, it's extremely rare if I go to an appointment and they are not present and if they do not remember. It happens from time to time with anyone, but because of these extra measures at the end of my script, I have better success at people being there and knowing why I'm coming, which is extremely important. Uh, I also want to jump into overcoming objections. A lot of times they'll say, hey, I'm not interested, we're covered, I have insurance, I don't need you to come out. Whatever they say, this is an objection that you can easily use which is, okay, let me ask you a couple quick questions so we can get you off of our list. It's an out for them. A lot of times people build a wall initially and they'll just say things that they don't even mean or that, are, or that aren't even objections that are like initial complaints. Like, uh, we already have coverage. I told her I didn't, want to call, I didn't want anybody to call. 
I don't want you to come to our house. Whatever they say, generally, a lot of times, it's not even an objection. It's some type of initial complaint. And so to get over the initial complaint and to try to bring that wall down slowly so we can set the appointment, all righty, perfect. Before you hang up, let me ask you a couple quick questions so we can get you off of our list. Sound fair enough? Uh, and they always want that, uh, and they like that. I, and, and actually, I act like I'm going to take them off my list, and, and I will, but as soon as I set the appointment. Uh, and what happens is I'm able to go from... Okay, well, let me ask you a couple quick questions so we can get you off of our list. And then I'll actually proceed into verifying their information. Um, you mentioned your first name is John, your last name is Smith, your hobby is fishing. If they give me an, er, and if they give me an, an early objection, uh, so a lot of times I'll get an objection at this point. I will, a lot of times I'll get an objection with, after I say, she told you I'd give you a call back about qualifying for the new state-regulated burial life insurance programs. A lot of times I'll get an objection right there. I told her I didn't want anybody to call me. I already have insurance. I'm already covered. I've already got a burial plan. Uh, whatever the case is, whatever I don't want you to come out. I don't want anybody to come to my house. I've got a very busy week. Whatever the complaint is, and sometimes there are true objections, but very rarely is it actually a true objection. A lot of times it's just a complaint, just to get you off the phone. Or a lot of times, when we, when we do it too. We have something that we say just to get someone off the phone just to not talk to a telemarketer, just to not talk to a salesman. That's what happens more times than we think. Uh, and so they're doing the same thing. They're no different, they're all human. And so we wanna be able to overcome those objections or those complaints and proceed on. So proceeding to verifying their info, if I typically get it after the state regulated burial life insurance programs, okay, very good. Um, and, and if they say, hey, I, want, um, I already have, I already have uh, my burial paid for, excellent. We're not going to touch that. We're not going to do anything. But we're already going to be in your area anyway, so why don't we at least drop off some information so that you have some information about these new state-regulated programs, which everyone seems to like a lot. Um, and, and dropping off information doesn't sound threatening, doesn't sound salesy, and it sounds very brief. It sounds like we're just going to show up, hand them something, and leave in our car, which never happens. Um, and, and the reason I go to these extents to overcome objections, I'll go to houses all the time and I'll think, okay, it's a, this one's going to be really tough. Uh, and to give you a quick, quick, quick story, um, we had an agent in the office called the house on, uh, called a lead on uh, a couple Mondays ago. Um, he got hung up on. I called on Tuesday and called, talked to the exact same person. And she said, hey, I've, I'm, because uh, uh, I told her, uh, we're going to be out in your area uh, on Wednesday. We've got an appointment uh, at 11 o'clock. We're going to be going through your area. She said, well, I've got a doctor's appointment at, at uh, 1030, um, so you can't come out. It just won't work. And I said, well, why don't we at least, if I promise to be brief, why don't we at least drop off some information so that you have the information that you requested? And she said, well, and so I said, well, why don't we come by about 9, drop it off, We'll go about our business. We'll go on, on to our next appointment. And that way you can get to your doctor's appointment on time. Um, and she said, yeah, okay, you know, as long as you just promise to drop something off. Well, what happens is we get to the house the next morning and she forgot that she gave any objections at all. She let me in the house. 90 minutes later, we had sold her, her husband, and her uh, daughter. And we'd actually replaced three policies and sold them all three. And then... At the end of the appointment, she rescheduled, because we need a little more time to finish things up, some paperwork and some phone interviews. She, she rescheduled her doctor's appointment, which was so important to her, for later that week on Friday. So things people say they don't always mean. And the reason I'm, and, and there's reasons why I don't want to pre-qualify anyone. Because a lot of times I'll go out to appointments, and even yesterday, I ran four appointments last night from 1.30 to, to seven and I didn't get home till uh, almost 9 30 10 o'clock last night well what happens is I didn't think they were going to be very good appointments because they were very difficult to set and I acted like I was just going to drop I was going to swing by and drop off information that they wanted and they all agreed for that everyone's okay with that it doesn't sound threatening well I told myself three out of these four appointments may be total garbage and may be really difficult to do anything but I knew from doing business in the past and seeing a lot of leads over the years that just because they tell you things over the phone 
does not mean that they're going to remember what they say when you go out there. I don't want to pre-qualify anyone, and if they say, hey, I, you know, I, I, uh, I don't have time, I already have something, I'm not serious about it, I don't want you to come out, whatever it is, I'm going to push because they're going to forget what they told me the day before anyway, and then they're going to let me in. Well, all those appointments yesterday let me in the home, and we, what's funny is the one I thought was going to be really solid, uh, that was easy to set, didn't buy. And, and really didn't really need to buy. The other three that I thought were gonna be really difficult are the ones we sold. So this is the, that's this business. Don't pre-qualify anyone. Don't assume anything is gonna do, that anyone's gonna do anything. Just overcome the objections, be relentless, set the appointment, and just get in front of as many people as you can. Um, that's really all that matters. I mean, uh, the, the objection I use, and I use the one objection sometimes if they say, well, I didn't really want you to call me. Um, I, uh, you know, I, I don't want you to come to my house. Um, you know, I told her not to call me back. Um, or they're upset. If, they, if they're upset, if they're, used, if they're saying stuff like that or if they're upset, I'm going I'm to use the objection that's on the script, which is, okay, well, let me ask you a couple quick questions so we can get you off of our list. Um, and that one works well. And I proceed into gathering into confirming information, letting them know why I was calling, <clears throat> and then letting them know, hey, I'm going to be in your area anyway. Why don't I just swing by for a couple short minutes and drop, drop off information? That's the way I do this specific objection. If they use the, the uh, if they say, hey, I've already got insurance, I already have everything paid for, um, you know, we're covered, whatever they say, then I'm going to use the other objection. I may end up using this one. I may end up using this one if they need to, but what will happen is they'll say, we're covered, I, I, we already have insurance, our burial's paid up, whatever they say. Okay, very good. Uh, we don't want to mess with any of that. Why don't we at least swing by and drop off some information with you? Uh, and so I use the drop off quite a bit just to get me in front of them. But then I go into, con into confirming the appointment and making sure that it's solid. So those are the different ways that I overcome objections. But again, with, with this, you got to be relentless you've got to focus on overcoming objections and getting the appointment. Don't pre-qualify anyone. Don't ask health questions. Don't ask what type of insurance they have, how much cover they have, what they're paying. Don't ask them anything. Focus on getting in front of people and good things will happen. That's exactly how this business works. So continue watching. The next video will be about our dialing session. You can see me sitting here on the phone calling live leads, 10 leads, and every person we talk to, we set an appointment. And you can see how we do that and the ways that we overcome objections and actually visually see and hear me setting appointments live on the phone. Thanks so much for watching and good luck.